Hey everybody, to kick things off a little bit here, um, what I want to do is, since I, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos about work, about at my work right now, my real life hospital job, um, I want to start off with what's on my desktop, what apps are running on my desktop. Um, I'm always curious what other tech professionals are doing, how they work, their workflow, you know, what kind of applications they use. I figured I'll share what, when I go into work every day, this is exactly what I have running, or at least the bare minimum of what I have running on my desktop at all times. So if we get right into it, uh, you can see I'm running Windows 7. It's, uh, we haven't tested out Windows 10 yet in our environment. We got a ton of other projects going on, but uh, I am running Windows 7 along with all the other technicians. And uh, so here's my desktop. I don't even have an image on the background. I typically don't. Um, the main reason is because when I remote in from home, my connection isn't the greatest here at home. So if I have a real high res image, and every time my desktop is shown or hidden and shown, it, uh, it has to refresh that image and it takes too long. So it, it's kind of a distracting thing. So I typically just have a gray background, that's it. Um, so the first thing I got running here is, of course, Outlook. Being in the tech industry, uh, we get a ton of emails and, um, and, and we, got a kind of, we got a lot of monitors going on, a lot of no notifications from systems, from uh, switches. If something goes down, we'll start getting notifications and right away we can take action on it. So uh, I'm not a big fan of checking email all the time, but in the tech industry, we have to. Uh, so I leave it up all the time, but I do turn off notifications because it's kind of a distraction. So um, Outlook, uh, and I use a minimal approach. Uh, meaning I, I try not to keep a lot of stuff in my inbox, stuff I'm just, I need to take action on. So Outlook's running, and of course we're on Outlook 2010 or Office 2010, and one day we'll upgrade, but again, got projects going on. So our next thing up um, is Chrome. Of course, we don't push out Chrome to everybody in the network, but us techs, we do a lot of things that some software requires uh, Chrome or Firefox. So we, I typically work out of Chrome just because I like it better. So in Chrome, what do I got running? I have four tabs. And this is, this is very typical of what um, I always have running, is these four tabs at bare minimum. The first one, uh, we're using Kanban Flow. It's basically a way to, it's a, it's a Kanban or Kanban or however you want to say it, Kanban workflow. But we're kind of using it as a to-do list and something we can kind of keep track of everybody's, what everybody's doing. So, and this helps me out a lot. Uh, so the first one's Kanban Flow, what I got working, what I'm working on now at the current time and what's in the pipeline. The next one up is Manage Engine Service Desk. This is our asset management program. It's our ticketing system and it works great. I have no complaints. Um, I just got done upgrading the, the system and I'm in the process of migrating the database from MySQL to Postgres SQL. And I'm having some problems, but this is what we use. It's great. Uh, you got a dashboard. You can look at uh, how many tickets everybody has. Um, you can look at everybody's tickets. You can, uh, you know, it, it's really good. The search works great. It, it keeps track of a lot of stuff. So we use Service Desk here at work. And we can go into more details of these individual things, ever, you know, at another time. But this is just a brief overview. So the next tab open is our wiki. It's We're using an old school Decky wiki system. It's, uh, it's it's becoming out of date as far as the features that it asks, that it offers, but it's basic, it's simple, and it works for us. The searching works. Um, we have a ton of documentation. If I scroll through here, you can see this is all the documentation we've written up over the past probably f six years, maybe. It's a lot of stuff. And then the last tab is my Unitrends appliance. Um, this is what we use for backups, and I'll go into details again with this one as well, because I've had some good uh, ideas from a lot of you people out there that you want to see some backup strategies and some backup stuff, but this is what we use for backup. In fact, I had to um, remote in this morning and take care of some errors, because I'm having some issues with this appliance and working with their support, try to get it worked out. But as far as Chrome, that's the basic, the bare minimum that I have open. Uh, next up, we have Commander. This is basically running a couple different PowerShell windows. There's nothing different between these two tabs here, but I always have PowerShell, uh, PowerShell running as administrator too. These are actually run as administrator accounts, or at least my domain admin account, because uh, there's this is essential. 
This is absolutely essential for everything I do here at the, the office. If there's one thing that I need to make sure I have open or at least quick access to is PowerShell. Um, and I'll go into details about that as well, but just as like a, a quick, I'll show you a quick example here once we're done, but um, this is essential. So we'll minimize that and, and you don't have to have commander. It's just what I like. And I like the tabbed um, view. I like how I can expand the window open and everything. So minimize that, what's next? This is Shortel Communicators. It's basically our phone system. We have VoIP. Um, we have Shortel VoIP phones here, and uh, it just allows us to manage the the phones at the office, and we can make calls from here and everything. So, uh, then of course VMware, our vSphere client. We have a lot of machines in here, a lot, and uh, and we do a lot of stuff with this. So I always have this open. I kind of want to keep track of what's going on in the recent tasks down here. If there's snapshots being removed or you know, because the backup appliance um, does a lot of VMware type backups and it utilizes VMware, uh, their snapshot system to take care of some of the backup. And then what's next? Let's see, we got HipChat. Uh, this is just something we use at work to communicate quickly. Instead of filling up everybody's email inbox, we do uh, a lot of quick communication here, especially if, so if systems are down or something and uh, a couple of us are working on trying to get it fixed. We, we communicate quickly through here. It's, it works great. And finally, Active Directory users and computers. This is always up and running. And if it's not, um, I launch it quickly through PowerShell. I launch a lot of my stuff through PowerShell. Because remember, I don't log in as my domain admin account, never. Um, there's only one scenario I have to do that. And I'll get to that in another video, but um, I'm always logged in as my non-domain admin user. So when I have to do stuff with like Active Directory using computers or um, you know, pretty much any of that type of stuff, DNS, DHCP, anything like that. I have to launch as admin or my domain admin account. So I just launch it straight from PowerShell. So here's the quick couple examples. Let's see. Uh, with my PowerShell open, I could just do DSA. That's shortcut for, I don't know what that stands, but it's for Active Directory using computers. <laughs> and then, um, you know, things like DHCP tab, and then it's the DHCP management console. And of course, DNS M tab. Tab completion works, there's my DNS manager. Um, but, I mean, I do a lot of stuff through here. For example, here's, here's another example. If I wanted to know, let's say, let's say you guys asked me, how many servers do you have at your office, Chris? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I have PowerShell open and I'll quickly get you an answer. So the way we structure our servers here is we have a servers OU sitting under another OU. And that's where all of our servers live, okay? And, um, well, most of them, except for the domain controllers. Domain controllers, they have their own OU and it's a special domain thing and that's fine. But I wanna know how many servers actually, how many how many objects are sitting in the servers account? So instead of trying to figure out a different way to do it, I just use get dash QAD computer and then I do search root because I wanna search and I'll bring it back up so you can see how I do this. I wanna search this OU. So I say search root ksphospital.com, which is this one up here. And then we do forward slash. And then the next one is group policy OU, group policy OU forward slash. And the next one is servers, so servers. And actually let's do this. Let's put it in a variable. Since I'm remoted in, I can't, can't figure out the exact hotkey I wanna use to get to the beginning. But let's say we wanna say, okay, let's create a variable called servers. And so we run that command against that OU. All right, let's say we just want to count of what's in there. How many objects are in this stupid thing? So we say, all right, cool. We go um, parentheses and we put the variable in there, servers, and close parentheses dot count. And there's 179, 179 servers. And that's a mix of virtual and uh, physical ones. And I'll get into that in another video, but that's just a quick example. And we get a lot of those kind of questions too, as far as, well, what, how many XP machines are in there? And there's, there's methods that we use here for that as well, but we, we, meaning me and the other sysadmin at least, we use PowerShell all the time. Um, the techs kind of use it from time to time, um, depending on the task or whatever project they're working on. And finally, what's on my desktop, the actual desktop itself. Uh, standard icons we push out, we have, we're required to push these out to everybody. Um, and I, I hate icons on my desktop, I hate it, I hate it, hate it, but it is what it is. I'm at work, I have to deal with it, I'm not special. Um, we should be doing it as close to the end users as possible. But I do have a screenshots folder. Oh, that's another thing. One other thing that's not showing down here, but it's running in my system tray, 
is green shot. Oh my God, we use this all the time. <laughs> I can do another another video on that. I did one previously, but um, I can show you how I have it actually configured because it saves my butt all the time. Um, and the green shots automatically save to the screenshots folder. Um, you know, basic stuff, just a couple of things I'm currently working on. Uh, remote control. Now this is a custom app, sort of, that communicates with another app. <laughs> we use Dameware to remote control into everybody's computers and, and the servers, for the most part, the servers. And we use an auto it script to automate a lot of this stuff. So we double click it and we say, so we, we get a call, somebody calls it, hey, can you remote into my computer? I don't know what to do with this, blah, blah, blah. So, all right, cool, what's your computer name? And then we just put in the computer name, you know, like, so let's just remote in, let's, let's just remote into a server, um, for instance, all right? So let's say we want to remote into this server. Type it in gets us right to the console and we're right there on the system and then we just close out and you know if when they're sitting at the desk if we're remote into the end users they can see us moving their computer and they know that we're in there we're not, we don't want to sneak in there we want them to know that we're there so we have a little message down there close that out um remote desktop i never use the icon i just i'm just a fan of mstsc and then whatever switch i need if it's public or um, admin for the console uh, but we use that select a printer is another custom thing written um, We've had some some challenges with printers <laughs> in this environment. Very, very many challenges. Um, but for the most part, I think um, this is this was kind of a band aid, and we just double click it. And if there's somebody floating around the hospital, they're at another building, and they need to map all the printers for that building. We're not going to move move their OUs. We're not going to move them around in their OUs from day to day. Uh. -uh. Um, because that's how we map printers is based on where your user account is. We actually set this up where, you know, oh, I want to work over here in this office. So you click it and you hit select. And what it does, it removes the printers. Uh, devices, printers. It removes the printers and it adds and installs the drivers to that location. So there you go. And if you want to do it again, let's say we're moving, we want to go back. Let's say we're back in IS. So we go to ANX, Information System, select. It's going to remove that printer and put in the proper printers for us. It's a really cool little thing. We could probably show you how to do that later, but um, that, again, is using AutoWit behind the scenes. And uh, I didn't write that. That's a little bit more complicated. I've never really messed with AutoWit too much, just some basic stuff. But we could probably show you how that works. And then just some other basic stuff. But all in all, that's, that's what's installed on my desktop that's what's running on my desktop at all times you know there's 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 other, a lot of other things that i have to open up throughout the day obviously but as far as the bare minimum that is, those are essential for me if i have those i'm good to go if my computer dies i'm going to make sure that i can get all those things back up and running 100 percent before i try to tap it too much more but uh yeah that's it what do you guys have running what do you what's your favorite software apps um, at least at work all right guys till next time